and there we go. We are now are live, Laura. Are we live? Yes, we are. Hello, everyone. Oh. I just decided to just unmute ourselves, so yeah, there is not much. And I'm the gonna podcast just... is live. Trip to this. Goodness. Hello. Wow. Yeah, Noxy, thank you for inviting me. I'm I'm excited to to be on your podcast. <laughs> I'm excited to ramble about lore. That's what I do all day anyway, so... <laughs> I love the lore. It's, it's, it's really good, but I actually don't really have too many people to to talk about it. Or, like, I can, but not... I, I don't really know too many people who are very passionate about it, honestly. Or, yeah, it's, you know, it's that, kinda, that kind of level. I don't know why, but it's like most people don't care. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. it's clearly a lot of people who do care. Like, and, and you know, like on, on Twitch, there's clearly a lot of people who care. But when I go, like, with with the people I raise with, and I'm going like, yo, did you see this lore thing? They all go like, what? <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? When is the new race coming out, you know? Yeah. I actually love the lore. Like, sure, there are, you know, like, sometimes story parts as we go that are, like, not really the best of the best, but there's still something. But I think that really goes for every game, honestly. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, out of any franchise I have interacted with, um, I have never been as invested into, like, a lore as, <laughs> as the Guild Wars one. You know, usually when I play MMOs, like, WoW or something, I'll just go, like, lore, I don't care. I don't know what's going on. And I skip, like, all the quest title. For some reason, I care about Kilter Store. Yeah, same. I, 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 I don't know. It just, I actually don't know because, in 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 Guild Wars One, when I started to play, I actually don't know what got me hooked so much on the lore that I just started to read more and more into it. I'm actually still sad and kind of ashamed of myself that I, I never gotten the books. Any of any of the books, like because I kind of want to, but I don't know. Like I kind of want to read them, but also not. <laughs> I don't know why. But They're it just like feels small. like that that like I'm even uh, like I'm someone who never really reads much, but I still manage to get through those. Uh, so if you want to, you should do it. But it's not like they're like the best books either not not to like criticize them too much but i like the first book was, and the other two books were a little bit more forgettable um but yeah how many... it's, it's not like you're missing out on too much yeah i mean i know sure actually how many did this uh if if, if i recall this sea of sorrows right mm -hmm. for book and uh what is the other two i i always forget their names the first one is Ghost of Asclon. Oh yes. Yeah. And it's about it's about like Dougal Kane going to Asclon and getting the claw of the Khan Ur and all that stuff. Um I, I really like that one because it's it was about like divinities reach sewers at the stars, like way before uh -huh. the game came out. It's like imagining the sewers. Um then there's also Edge of Destiny, which is oh, about right. yeah. Destiny's yeah. Edge. Yes, yes. And and stuff. <laughs> Destiny's Edge in, in the <laughs> What a name. Nobody expected Edge of Destiny to be about Destiny's Edge. How did yes. this happen? <laughs> They're alright though. It's like if if you ever feel like it, you can give the shots, but it's not like it's not like you're you know, it's not like they're necessary for anything. Um yeah. I, I would love if they did like a new book, you know, about Canva or something. Yeah, that would just... be cool. I wanna this... I wanna read the book about Palawa Joko, you know. Uh, yeah. like the main character. I'm actually I I will actually read a book like if it will be like the actual uh pre like not how to say not not like previous life but how uh Joko's life actually started like like a full book on that thing that oh. how how he became what what he kind of still is or not anymore I'm not sure like nobody really knows honestly. But... Yeah, like that that'd be so cool. Like he kind of it kinda of came out of nowhere, didn't he? Yeah. Like he has this whole like lore about how he fought Turai Osa and stuff. Um and how he tried to conquer Lona but he lost. But like it's like where did he actually come from? Was he like 
a human at some point? Or, yeah, he, or... he was. Like, like there is very little lore about his early life when he was still, like, a... I, I actually can't even recall, like, he was some kind of, like, a sorcerer or mage or something, or, like, a necromancer that he started to work with these things, like, how to make himself like, immortal or something. I actually can't really recall, so I don't want to say stupid things, but, like... Uh, in some story bits there were uh, small lore, but the the problem is that I can't actually decide in game if it's like true or not because obviously Joko really loved to like you know lie about himself. Oh yeah, like always just like like exaggerated everything all the time. So that's why I kind of wouldn't mind like an actual canon lore on Joko because then it's like a narrative per perspective right and then this... again like i was also very much enjoy like a joko autobiography where he just lies about himself I, that <laughs> would be fantastic as well yeah that would work as well honestly. i, I want to read about him defeating zaitan you know no <laughs> yeah zaitan actually i i will bring up one thing while we are start, still at, at the beginning did people forget the mystery of Mr. E? And this... I, I mean, <laughs> um, yes and no. Yeah. Kind of. I have kind of forgotten about the mystery of E at this point. It's like I used to care and I used to be like, oh, who's E? Is it Avenia? That, that doesn't make much sense. But, um, I, I don't really care about it anymore. Does that make sense? I kind of still do. And, and it actually pisses me off that I just. <laughs> there is no answer, and they just won't continue that probably ever. Like, so for like everyone that's 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 kind of confused right now, in like season one and season two, there was this mysterious character called E that would send you mails all the time. Yeah, and uh, it was kind of a mystery, like who is this character? But they never actually revealed that. And his name was Mister E, aka Mystery, which was a really fun punny. <laughs> I had forgotten about that as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 actually I'm I'm gonna say it. I really don't like when Arena just starts like a kind of an interesting either character or like a story bit on the side, and then it just randomly stops. It just I I right. can't I can't feast on it. Like I want more of it. Why do you just bait me into something and then slap a wall there down? Like wrapping up story arcs. I mean, I think that they they like. I was really impressed when they did like the whole white mantle thing in season three. That made me really happy. Um, I feel like sometimes they go back to those old story threads. It's just that you know, there's like a list of like yeah. infamous ones that just haven't been continued. You know, like the floating castle and oh, E yeah. and um. What else is there? Like the gargoyles disappearing. There, there, there are some mysteries out there that are just not really being addressed anymore, I suppose. Yeah, there is like, or, or the, the, uh, what was the name of that silvery, which actually came from an other tree? Oh, Malik. But the day, Malik. Yeah, oh yeah, Malik, Malik. And then they just discontinued because, you know, Heart of Thorns. <laughs> Yeah, I I still, I think, I, I don't have any source on this, but I have the feeling that Malik was like supposed to be a part of Heart of Horns and a whole different tree and stuff, but then, yeah. you know, they just kind of didn't have the time, I guess, to like do it. Yeah, it actually, and, actually could have been that. I don't know. It, it, I would love for them to do more Silvari stuff, to be honest, but I'm biased. I really like the Silvari. <laughs> but yeah, then, I, I mean, you know. Yeah. Like everything with like the Silvari and like the Nightmare Cores and stuff, it's just ever since like Heart of Forms ended in like 2015, it's pretty much just not been acknowledged much. Like, what is does the Nightmare Court even still exist and all that stuff? I'm I'm very curious, honestly. I I actually like as like a player character, I actually don't like Silvari, but their lore is kind of interesting. So I, I, I give that to them. 
But you don't like Silvari. Oh my god. I, I thought actually. your character was a Silvari, you know, see like your green character <laughs> or your that's totally Silvari. Yes. <laughs> I actually they are the the third uh race that I like the most because I actually Guild Wars 2 is the only place where I don't like no one anymore, unlike I did in Guild Wars 1. Because they were somewhat interesting in Guild Wars 1, but in Guild Wars 2 they just kind of became this, like, giant humans and that's it. Not just by this model, whole thing but... about, like, turning into bears, right? That was, yeah. like, a huge part of it. And then, like, Jorah kind of became an outcast because she couldn't become a bear anymore. Yeah. And now it's just like an elite skill that that's just kind of there. Yeah, doesn't and really feel all like the it's others. part of that culture anymore. Yeah, and it's kind of just strange because, like, it was their kind of big thing that they had these blessings to turn into these animals, kind of partially, mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's like. It's like a, oh, I, I don't even know, like a super rare kind of ultimate ability suddenly for them in Guild Wars 2, where like, Braham is like, I, I, I lived like a third of my life and then I suddenly can use the, the uh, what does he have, the, the wolf, or I actually forgot. Uh, Big what? hairy beast thing. Yeah. I think it's wolf. actually. I, I played that know. story instance where it goes like into the volcano. I I don't, I don't want to spoil it in case people haven't played it, but I played that like two days ago, and uh, it was it was kind of cool. I I I like some of the Norn stuff they did in Icebreak Saga with like the spirits of the wilds and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, it, it feels different than in God's Um, I I like the Norn though. I would like more Norn stuff. Yeah, it's it's not bad by by base, but. I don't know, the way it went in Guild Wars 2, it's just not my own personal taste. N not that much. It's not bad, not... Like, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's, uh, I don't know, kind of really a weird path it went off in Guild Wars 2. I actually say... Uh, I'm gonna say one thing, actually, which probably many people won't agree with me. I actually have no problem with, with Braham. <laughs> Oh, yo, I am hashtag Bram gang, okay? It's all about Bram, no? Like, I feel like that's the point of Bram. That he is the way he is, that you kind of really want to dislike him. I, I mean, I feel like people weren't really hating on Bram that much, and then there was like a Spartan season 3, where he was kind of like supposed to be annoying, yeah. and then he never really recovered, it's like everyone still hates him. Yeah. I don't know. I I was, I I don't I don't really mind Bram. He's not like my favorite character. But, yeah, same. Um, I don't really understand where some of the hate is coming from. I suppose I feel like it's also a meme, right? Yeah, like it's kind of yeah. funny to hate on Bram. Just like that. Like yeah, I I understand that people you know go with the, uh, this wall irresponsible thing. You know, like people. You know, in in like the store. Uh, well. I don't really want to spoil things for people, but you know that you you tell him something to not do, and then he he does the opposite, you know, yeah. and and then he's like, oh my god, and it's like, yeah, you could have just not drink or something, you know, just it's not that hard. I think he's kind of funny though. I I think yeah. Graham is a cool character. I, I don't I, mind him at all. I think he's funny. There is just one thing I I don't like in the wall c community, which is the when people like kind of don't seem to like a character and everyone just wants to kill them off all the time like it it was like uh Trehir, Treharn, or how do you say his name i always forget yeah and then like cormir back in nightfall <laughs> yeah i mean yeah cormir was kind of a meme but it wasn't that bad honestly it just it it was the obvious way that it it would go anyway because like in that ending, like, what do we expect? Like, do you re like, did people truly expect for the player character to be that what Cormier became? Like, they the can't continue this. Chemicals. Yeah, I like, what? This. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love that video. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think with, with Bram, I mean, it's, there, there's, 
I guess like people that legitimately don't like this character that much and and someone in your chat just made a good point i feel like bram dying in the ice brew saga would have been kind of perfect yeah you know, i, I do on. agree with, with that actually that th that could have been the perfect place or time for him to actually mm -hmm. like purposefully die there yeah, and then, you know, people would maybe kind of like him again and stuff, because he did lots of good stuff. But I, I don't mind him sticking around and maybe showing up again in the future. I think he's an always character. I think he's pretty cool. But there are also really good characters, in my opinion. But I, I, I'm also very sad that the... Okay, you, you can't really say too much, because there was, like, Blish. And we had very little of Blish, so you can't really oh, yeah. say that, wow, he, he was an amazing character. He started off as an amazing character, but we, we don't know where the character will be right now, if, it, if he will be still, you know, alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but it did start really well, like, it, it was kind of an interesting character, it's, it, it was also very different from the norm. The way he was in the golden body, obviously, but I don't know, like killing off these this character so soon sometimes feel like a little bit mm, a sour taste in your mouth, maybe sometimes to me. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Blish is cool, and I would have I would have liked to see more Blish. Those I I do think that like when. Oh, it's... Are we spoiling things today, Noxy? Or are we not spoiling? No, things? we 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 can spoil. It's it's about lore. We we don't <laughs> care if you want. If you guys, if you don't want spoilers, just just close your ears. Don't listen. Say la 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 la, and and don't listen. <laughs> today we have spoilers about everything. We don't care. We go on because we will yeah, talk we are about spoiling these. Spoiling Avengers Endgame. We're spoiling yeah, Harry Gandalf Potter, dies. Game of Thrones. <laughs> everything. No. Yes. No, but like you know that scene when like Blish like, you know when 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 Bl Blish ceases to be a part of the story. <laughs> it's not like he died or anything. No, yeah. I I thought that scene was so cool, with like the music and like the graphics yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, Blish was cool. Just in general, like season four was so good. Like I've having replayed like all of the Guts two story recently for the. Living World X Returns, I legitimately think season four is like the best story that kills two skulls. So it goes. Which one is that about? I actually because I I I, I can't go by numbers anymore. I I just completely forgot what they are about. Oh, that's the stuff of like after Pulp of Fire. Ah, okay, like, okay, okay, it's okay. Like Joker yeah, yeah, yeah. First, that's actually really story. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think story uh, st mm. story wise, I still say that. Out of Fire and the this the season that was after was the best mm -hmm. story wise, but gameplay and ma map wise was the probably the worst. It was still beautiful maps and stuff. It's not that, but like you know, like uh, I think like map wide content and all all that thing inside was really poor and kind of empty. While Heart of Thorns was the opposite, which had really freaking cool maps with meta and gameplay. To this mm -hmm. day, because I still love, I actually still love um, Dragon Stand. Um, I I love all, all all the metas actually to this day, even though I don't really do them anymore because I'm just <laughs> I did so many le legendaries and and stuff. I'm I'm just kind of burned out right now. Yeah. So it I just Yo, had more I, than uh, enough of that. I was doing like I was. Crafting three sets of legendary armor oh in a row God. because it was like I want all of them. I remember seeing you at Chuck Garen like once. <laughs> yeah, I was doing Garen like almost every single day for like months. Yeah, and same. I'm just done. I'm never doing Chuck Garen <laughs> again. Ah, you will do. Don't worry. <laughs> you just need a break. <laughs> most likely, most likely, I will be back. But yeah, the like collecting the the Chuck eggs as well. It's like, oh my God, please, just faster. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <Going insane. laughs> but it's That's still a great meta. I hope from End of Dragonstone, like I want those maps to be really big and pretty, just like Puff of Fire. Yeah, but then I want like 
the metas from Heart of Thorns, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do really hope that in, in End of Dragons, or well, let's just say Kenta, they will have really good, like, I don't ask for, like, mob-wide meta, but, like, very, very good metas that, like, yeah, what what we had in in Heart of Thorns, and not just some you know very bland stuff. that just tries to be something. So I yeah, I I, I really hope for those because those mass rec maps are are actually really looking really cool, honestly. Yeah, yo, I'm so um, I kind of just kept like being more amazed. Um, again, I, I know there's some people who are like not watching the live streams and not watching the trailers and stuff. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail. But it's like Shing Jay, I was like, oh, this is pretty. And then Echo Vault, I was like, oh, this is even more pretty. And yeah. then the JC, I was like, oh, this looks amazing. <laughs> it's like they just kept getting better even or something. Yeah, yeah. They had, the JC was actually really, really beautiful. The the actual so sea big. part is really, really beautiful. Yeah. And the so and the textures are really nice as well. Like it's it's actually really looking really good. Although I I still find the 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 quarry type of jade a little bit kind of not like very off from the actual jade sea. So I don't know why they why are they so different suddenly in like texture and color like it's not even that it's you know like not the typical oh it's much darker or like a wrong shade of green or something but i just don't know why they seem so off from the actual sea like because the the quarry if is 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 made of the sea so why is it so different I just, I, that, that's the only thing i don't get for myself it just I don't you know, know what I I do kind of like about it though. Um, I think this was a I'm I'm shamelessly stealing this talking point from I think it was wooden potato Susada. I kind of like that the blocks of jade because they're so green, they look kind of almost like radioactive. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. They are like it, infused it or like something. Fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, actually. I feel like that might have been what they were like going for. You know, I actually. Uh, I'm 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 not gonna lie. When I was watching the stream and they were there, I was more hoping that the deeper you go down, in, in like sea level, so you technically you know like uh, cut deeper into the jade, it it mm -hmm. gets darker. Like I could have been much, uh, or how to say properly, like to me personally, I would have preferred that more. So it feels like the the deeper you go the more i don't know like power because obviously they, they said that the jade is like dragon magic infused or whatever how to say so that could have gave me the feeling that the deeper you go the more more powerful powerful it, it could mm. be or something instead of just like randomly like full like dark green from the top to bottom but i guess that's that could be very very near impossible to do to have like a gradient i guess i i mean probably could be done or something but i don't know the technical limitations of that uh someone in chat is saying something interesting uh rosestormer just wrote my theory is that the jade mines in the quarry has been laid open only recently and it looks different like oxidation changing the look of metals on the server yeah i think that's yeah, a really yeah. cool idea as yeah well. that's a, yeah yeah that uh, that does actually make sense and then again, though, I I think that when you look at, like, the sea itself, it looks so darn pretty. Yeah. I actually really like the, the sea part. Yeah, there was this one shot where they were, like, showing the sea go off in the distance and stuff. Um, where it hadn't been, like, mines away yet. And, oh my gosh, I I was, like, blown away by that. It looks so good. I like that they did it so it really... F it just as just as they mentioned in the JC stream at the beginning, that the JC does really feel like it's it's more west, not just like a you know like a small pool of water. Oh yeah, it goes off into the distance, right? Yeah, like so they just the gave that illusion of like you know foggy and it's very far away. You can't see the the mountains. You can just barely see them. 
Although I actually don't really know how it will work if they ever decide to add more maps and you just, you know, start to go to the bottom of the map. Because currently we mostly... I actually... It will, it's, it's kind of a different topic, obviously, but I do wonder uh, also in which directions we will or they will expand the maps maybe in the future like because both in 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 Icebreak saga or you know in heart of thorns uh part of fire we got more and more maps and just kept you know growing to different directions and i just don't know where they can go there it would be so interesting if they like go to like the parts of Kenfa that we've never been yeah. to. I want to go to the bo uh, the bottom or the the mountain part of bottom because that's where we do the. Did you know that there is the uh, the Tengu thing, right? Yeah, the like the, the mission, mission pack. pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and 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 that'd be so cool. I was actually I only just recently realized that that it is there. I actually never noticed that it was there, that that down south on the map, in like basically the mountains, which was really weird. Which means that there are actually people there as well, or maybe not people, mm -hmm. but like Tengu, perhaps, or something. It was just like, I think I'm just excited in general to see like 2021 or I guess 2022 Arena Net like do something entirely new. Yeah. You know, because they've kind of. For the most part, they've kind of been like retreading the errors that Guild Swan did, which makes me happy, right? It makes me nostalgic and I yeah. appreciate that stuff. Um, but it, it doesn't, hasn't happened that often that they've done stuff that is like entirely new. Not to say that they're just copying maps, that's not the case at all, right? Like there's plenty of like creativity. But, you know, just imagining like an entirely new continent with yeah, like new I really races want that. and that would be like amazing. <laughs> Actually, I would love to see something like this. Actually, with that, I'm 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 gonna pull pull up my notes because I did kind of had an idea or like a very vague idea, something r related to this. Uh, so it's kind of like a two type of things which I will mention. One, I feel like, and I did say this before, but I do feel like. That they will show Kining the the the, uh, the very end because Kining is like a completely futuristic city by now. Oh yeah, um, I mean, like it would make sense, right? They've got like all this J technology. Yeah, like the Kining seems like the prime place to use that. Yeah, you know, have like some Blade Runner like city or something. And also because. Like in lore, Kynang had the most rich people, you know, like who basically that's why they had the 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 refugees as well in, in you know in the old Guild Wars one uh, mm -hmm. times because they had the actual ability to just pull up those obviously not too perfect and not and not really comfortable like a uh, walled city type of uh, thing. That they built, but they had the space and and ac actual funds to make that happen to actually have the the refugees come there from Shinji and the other places. Or well, not 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 from Shinji actually, sorry, uh, but from like the Jade Sea and from the 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 forest because that's where people came from first time. I wonder. Um, it is kind of curious that they're. You know they're they're taking such a long time to show it almost. I, I have a feeling that it it's gonna be a banger. You yeah, know, like same. they show it and then it's like, wow, it's so different. Um, but who knows? It's 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 hard to say. There's just been there's just been some hints. You know, um, I'm like sure you've art. seen this, but there's this one like image in the yeah. background of that um infographic data with the, the neon signs and stuff yeah that you, yeah 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 that's exactly See, like what. a city with like neon signs it's like well yeah. is that kind of and that's also called difference right like it's called new kind of now yes that would be so cool and actually from that i'm i'm gonna just mention the other thing that i had uh relating to this 
and kind of the the possible story well not not really possible story but like uh my kind of you know just a uh, train of thoughts taut, uh, that i had chaining in into each other that i kind of feel like that this um, how to say like we have the empress and in in the trailer it also talks about like that she promised a future and i i kind of just feel like it it gave me this vibe of like a weird uh, time travel which is not like real time travel but more more like uh, that the empress or someone before like uh, possibly fell into the mist or like went into the mist and you know obviously just as in lore it been explained in the mist you can see different re realities or different uh well yeah different uh types of theria and may and you know obviously the war planet that i'm talking about and what if the empress or someone else who she had or someone from you know her family family or anything maybe went through the mist and seen an actual kanta that was fully in the future because they they used the jade as as a technology and like fuel and and all that thing and then they came back and then they seen that yeah this could actually work like wow and then they, you know, just started to promise that we seen this future that we can do. And then they now promised that future to the people of Kanta on our reality. Like, it's kind of far-fetched, you know, but um, I'm still... Kind of gives me that type of vibe, honestly. I'm not sure what do you think about it. <laughs> I mean, like, she could just be saying it as in, like, yo, I I've been promising them to make their lives better better with jay like she don't it's not doesn't necessarily mean that she's seen it but it would be like hella interesting uh i think it also just kind of goes it kind of like raised this interesting question like where did this jay technology come from yeah like did june just kind of like experiment and figure this out or like did they you know did did perhaps some dragon tell them about it or uh, there's there's so many things they can do yeah just it, it's hard actually... to say anything right now like the details are like so sparse but um, yeah i think regardless though that story is gonna be like hella interesting yeah there there's actually many possibilities of how the story will go and and mm. why why the empress is the way she is or why things happen the way the, it happens but it's also strange to me that it's kind of a bit more deep in lore, but to me it's really strange that they didn't want it to show us the the Harvest Temple during the DJC stream. Like, they completely oh. didn't even look into that direction. I mean, there's this one piece of art, right? With the, the art that's, like, super prominent, where you see, like, Marjorie... Uh, standing there, and then there's like a dragon like swirling around the J uh, around the harvest temple and stuff. I think something's gonna happen to it. Like it's gonna get attacked or something, or it's gonna get destroyed. Um, I think it's gonna be a big part of the story. Like something that happens there. Like even now when I'm, <laughs> it's I'm so sorry that I'm just coming up with with these very very strange ideas of the lore and like theory uh, theories no that's what makes it fun but like coming up with ideas and seeing if you can predict it and stuff you know like just just kind of connecting some dots very vaguely is is giving me like i usually base my ideas of for these possible future lores on on like past kind of canon things that actually happened and been explained in the game like do you remember from Eye of the North, uh, I mean the, the Guild Wars 1 Eye of the North, uh, times there is an Azura who gives you a quest to... Uh, oh, actually, what are those? The, the, uh, the facets quest, where you have oh, to find these like, facets. Like with Lazarus, you mean? Uh, no. 
there is the um, it's like an extra bonus quest chain oh. that you can pick up. It's like not in the story, but you can just pick it up as like a side quest because they all I all didn't do it then. they actually all give uh these. I think they give like the summon uh skills for the Azura skills. I mean, like the the PV skills, but um, I'm not sure anymore. But basically, the war quest explains that on 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 Tyria, and the mists is basically on some places are so close together that randomly things from the mist can fall over to our world, basically. So that's that's what what the quest slow, slowly explains, and that's why you do the quest because. The Azura has this this uh, theory theory sorry uh, that the mist on some specific parts are very close to our world, uh, just as I said, and and he sends you away to check these places with like a sensor uh, because it can sense like the the I don't know like the <laughs> the mist in in some weird way. Like how weak or or strong the the border or something. It's it, it's like an ozone layer, you know, and oh. and 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 you start checking, and, and when you get close, these things actually start to spawn, which is the facets, but they are strangely related to the to the human gods, and they are actually dragons as well. That's why people kept uh, by the way, uh, theorizing. That the the other dragons and maybe the gods have like some kind of connection to each other, you know, but it's mm. been debunked or whatever, like told I think by some dev before that they have actually no connections or whatever. I'm not sure, but yeah. So basically, it explains uh, anyway. The the war quest explains that that on some parts on on Tyria, anywhere on the planet. You have weak spots where, yeah, things can come come through from the mists from any part of the mist, which is which actually and and the author explains that there are these these very specific specific spots which can be where where people can be also much closer to the gods, so these places are probably explained to be like the the old temple of the ages. Because you can be oh, much closer right. to the gods, but there is also, which also explains in Guild Wars 2 in some coincidental way, because there is the Shadow Behemoth, which yeah, just comes I mean, through the absolute nothing, right. and it's I mean, right it next to that. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Like you have like, you have like these spots where I guess it's like the more magical spots almost and you know like, yeah uh, and then you have like a portal and that shows up and a shadow beam and just goes like huh i'm gonna ruin your day um yeah. so are you, are you like suggesting that might be related to like yeah that it could be the the harvest temple could be also one and i'm oh. ju i'm just saying this in, in in context to the idea that you know how the the actual trailer starts where this unknown voice, I, I, I don't know who, who that is actually, just mm -hmm. says that it's like a voice in the mist when when it talks to Orion, and then June asks, who, who are you talking to? And then says that, oh, it's just some voice through the mist or in the mist or something. So what if this dragon or someone, I for some reason I actually assume that it's like a dragon or someone, or, or something similar, Maybe it's actually not on Kanta, but in the mist, but can communicate to like multiple s sides through the mist to like different Kantas, you know, like uh, as I tried to explain that maybe there are different Very, like full multiverse. Yeah, that's theory. that's a little bit far fetched, but in in some way we also had that in the Azura story where our future self just comes over and like, huh, yeah, hello. You know, and this shit. I, I like... mean, I, I think with like the mist, they can do like all kinds of like wacky stuff. You know, like they they've done that stuff before. Those, I don't know. I feel like 
the mist is almost like this tool that, yeah. that they yeah. can just use when they want to like make magical things happen. It's like, oh, we want to make the shadow beam come out of nowhere. Oh, we use the mist. Yeah, That's yeah. Where the shadow beam yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a explain anything kind of tool. Yeah. Which I both I like and not. I mean, I think that stuff would be really interesting, but if I would have to guess, I think it's going to be pretty groundless. If yeah, I had to guess, my, my gut feeling tells me it's all just going to be like Ontario. And my gut feeling is that there's this mystery character in the trailer that's like talking with Aureen. And then the mystery character is like, the voice that I hear. And then that's Aureen that, that they're talking to. Yeah, It, it could be yeah. really interesting though. Just... I I I I'm almost like guessing just the the simplest explanation if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it it could be simply just the thing that the the unknown voice is like like mentally communicating with with Orin and then thinks that 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 Orin is from the mist for some reason because they can't see Orin on on Kanta yet, you know. And it's just like nothing any extraordinary it's just simply that they are like telepathic, but they are not through the mist or anything. They are just like, you know, calling on a phone. <laughs> Come over, Orin. You know, like a telephone call. And then Orin is like, guess I have to go to Canva. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I think it's going to be. My video won't be relevant anymore. <laughs> well... <laughs> the one where I where I made Orin say that I'm going to Canva and you won't. <laughs> Good one. Wow. Yo, Noxie, you also had like this, these people sending questions, yep. right? Should, should we look at those questions? Yep. Because I think we're going to just ramble about stuff for yep. hours otherwise. Yep, yep. So... I have like 10 things I want to ramble about. Oh, wow. I have so many things I can ramble about. Okay, which one you should... Uh, pick one yourself, actually, maybe for one. Or we can get just to go one by one, honestly. I don't really know. Oh, mind. I haven't, I haven't like read them yet. <laughs> Actually, we, we, I mean, obviously, we don't have to go through all. We can just pick, because I did say that we may, we may just pick a few to read or, like, discuss, maybe. Oh. But there are I some mean, good ones. I think ones. they're all pretty interesting. Like, glancing over them. Yeah, I should see. We, should we just start at the top? Just go, like, top to bottom. Yeah. So we have the deaths of the Elder Dragons seem to affect Tyria more than the d departure of the gods. So I wonder who the six really were and what was their use to, ta to Tyria or of Tyria, I don't know. Oh, um, that's a, an interesting question. Hmm. I mean, it's pretty broad as well, though. Like, who were the gods and what did they do? Yeah. I... <clears throat> Like in Guild of Spawn, they were like really mystical, right? Yeah. It, it was like they just kind of, um, it's like the golds, you know, and we don't know shit about them. And in Guild of they're a bit more like normal almost. Yeah, like, it's it's really interesting. They're a bit more grounded or something. You know what I think? I think they're just like strong mist creatures. And yeah. They just went like, yo, it would be so cool if we make like a race of things what if they are just humans. playing dnd with us and they are like oh, look at this <laughs> kind of i mean i so as in like what what is like their their purpose and stuff what was their uses here i think they just use it as like a playground just went like yo there yeah. are humans here Let's see how they're doing and then they kind of went like oh crap there's some dragons here guys we're leaving <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of dangerous over here Oh, that is a nice mountain, which is a dragon! Oh, God! <laughs> I think the goals are hella interesting, though. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if they'll ever, like, explain them more. Maybe, like, after the dragons are gone, they can do more stuff with the goals. Part of me doesn't want them to do more stuff with the goals. Yeah. Like, I kind of like that they're a bit of a mystery and they're, like, kind of yeah. mystical and stuff. You know, this... I'm not sure if I want to meet them, you know. This... This bit a little bit reminds me that our area, the continent, is kind of like the the America of movies, you know? Like <laughs> everything only happens in America in movies. It only gets that that invaded, nothing else <laughs> and all that thing, you know. Like there is a war planet 
and then the gods is always were always there. The other the elder dragons is only there, <laughs> and it's like why are we so so freaking unfortunate? <laughs> Oh, it's a, you got this entire planet. All yeah. of the dragons were all gonna sit in this one like square kilometer. <laughs> yes. you know? It's kind of I mean, funny. I think it's just you know the the nature of like game development. Yeah, like, obviously. This is the world we've got. Let's put them here. They can kind of like explain that with lore, though. Like, oh, there's a lot of magic there. That's why they all went there. You know. I mean, maybe there's more of them. Actually, who knows? Like, they they already brought in you know the mother. And all that thing with the other dragons, like maybe there is actually way more than we we thought. Like, like what if? I mean, I I actually don't know because they also brought in the, you know, this thing that if you il eliminate all, and then if you can't handle that uh, that uh, magic that they, you know, blasting into the air, then you know it it would just uh, Im umble. Um, what is it called? Like, makes the whole world unstable and stuff, you know? So it's kind of hard to say anything to it, in my opinion. If there is more or not. Or could be more of them. Hmm, I, I would, I'm... like, from a story perspective, I agree. But, like, I have a feeling that Arenanet at this point is kind of done with dragons. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. They're that's, kind of, like, doing that's very end possible. of dragons. Like, I think... It would be pretty wild if they go like end of dragons. Yo, all the dragons are gone. We're going to a different continent, and there's five more. Wow, that's gonna be another ten years of living halls. I I don't think they would do more. Yeah, just from same. that perspective. I actually wouldn't mind. Still, uh, uh, how to say an expansion where we where it's basically you know like the old utopia. Uh, concept where we're just going mm. to the mist and it's just different worlds which they also made like city for it like like divinity's rich you know and all that stuff but anyway that's that's a different thing but yeah sometimes I, I just feel like the more they go with the story and more wide they go the more they kind of regret that they ca kind of boxed themselves into specific things in in the lore you know Right. I mean, with like Guilds as One, they were like doing like kind of unique stories every single time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like they were kind of coming up with something entirely new each time. Yeah. And yeah. now it's kind of like, oh, well, we've got these six dragons that we have to deal with eventually. And then turns out it was Abaddon who was behind it all. <laughs> wow, it's all a plot twist. But yeah, I, I have this feeling that they are kind of excited to like move on from the dragons yeah. after like almost a decade of like dragon stories yeah I, I... Know, i'm kind of excited to move on from dragons and like see them do something new same i'm actually happy because they they did say that uh, end of dragons won't be the last expansion for sure and that actually gives me hope that they won't like after that there is kind of not much reason I mean, there is still a few mystery that that for what they could come back to to like uh, back to to Tyria, you know, like the the continent, which which is like uh, I'm 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 talking about like the the uh what is the name of it? What I I was um, which was the mo the Mersa thing, you know. Mm. Oh, the Isle of Jennifer. Oh yeah 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 that. Yo, I wanna go there so badly. Yes, when I was like a kid, and then like, I don't know if it wasn't even out yet, but they did like the pre-patch or something. I, maybe you remember, they expanded the map. <laughs> and they made it like that you could look up there. And I just saw this island on there, like the Isle of Janfrey. I was like, that must be where the expansion ends. Why would they put yeah. this island on the map if we're not going there? And now we're here, like... How, how many years? It's been like 14 years later. <laughs> yeah. And we still haven't gone there. Yeah. I want to go there so badly. Oh. One day. Yeah. I mean, people still hope for the 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 floating uh, castle in Castle. Oh, right. Didn't well. someone ask a question about that as well? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure which one was that. Yo, this is a good segue. This is like yeah. going through the questions very smoothly. Uh, which one? Wait, wait, which one? 
Um, oh, oh yeah, if here. If floating tower gets made into a strike mission, as it should be, <laughs> what would the inside look like? What books would be in the library? Would those books attack? Oh, that's a wild idea. Oh, like yeah. Book monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the, the, the wizard that lives there has, like, golems and shit, right? I guess you could make a book go. <laughs> Oh <laughs> yeah, and the books say that you will pay, and you are oh like, no, God. don't hit me, no, with your money. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> because I... it's a little library. Do you do you care about like the floating castle? Is this a thing you want you want to do? I actually want to like see it. I actually want yeah. to explore it once before the war franchise just ends. Like, just give it to us, please, just for one day, even. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was in Guilty's one as well, right? And it was like, why is this castle there? What does it do? And then I... they brought it back in Guilty's too, and oh, yeah. they teased that there's this wizard living there and stuff, and we just never, we just never went inside. Yeah, because they kind of hinted that there is like a necromancer there, mm -hmm. like a, I think it was like Veratas. Oh no, 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 that was the other, uh, because that was like a no, that actually was one. Because they are uh, in 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 Guild Wars One, I think there was like these v Veratas followers or who first, and then oh, they just yeah, kept like explaining, the yeah, yeah, and, and and then they just kept explaining that that he was like a student to someone in the castle, and they were like powerful necromancers, so so they probably oh. like uh, some kind of immortal beings by now, I guess, or they just completely dead, <laughs> who knows, honestly, and they just left the the castle there, you know. You know, and then you just explore the war thing as like a strike mission, and it's just empty. And then you go to the end, open the chest, and it just says, ha ha. Wow. <laughs> it was all a trap all along. No, but I, I... It's just been this mystery for so long. Like, I, I want to go inside there, and I want it to be like really impressive. Yeah. You know? And it just... It, it, They've been like teasing it for like fifteen. Yeah, years, yeah. You know? That's what I wanted to say. That they even teased it before. I mean, before the layoffs, you know, there was like a couple of people who just you know jokingly teased, uh, teased it on like streams they had on on guild chats and stuff before many years ago, and they were like, mm, "What's in the castle?" And like, ah, oh, stop doing this. The horrible secrets of the floating castle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Clearly they thought about it. <laughs> I I feel like it's just like a perfect setting for like a race wing, you know? Like we've had a race in the Mystic Forge. We had fun in the the, the hidden city of Adashim. Yeah. Um it's it's just perfect. Just like put a raid there. I guess it could be a strike mission. But oh, I just wanna go inside. I don't even care anymore what's in there at this point. Even if we just fight like a big book boss and there's zero lore, I'll just be happy that we went inside. Well, I actually would want some lore, or, or at least like, you know, old, old, old notes or books and they, what they researched, right. what they did and why they did it. Like, I'm most interested, like, why? I, I don't even care about what and what they did. It's just like, why? What was the reason they actually made this? Like, there are not many floating castles on Ontario for some strange reason in this fantasy world, but... I know when, like, yo, it looks cool, let's make a floating castle. <laughs> it just, it just feels know, with yeah, very like, bad puns. I mean, like, a, it's, a, it's a wizard's tower, right? Like, there's yeah. a wizard who lives there, so... It, it wouldn't make sense for there to be, like, a big library with lots of books and stuff. Um, you know, I really like the Durman Priory basement instance that they did in Season 2. You know, oh, where they yeah. were, like, these yeah. books everywhere. And you oh, yeah, that's so nice. I would love something like that. You know, just books everywhere. That place Talk is about, actually like, ancient really cool. lore. Oh yeah, I love those. Oh, I don't know, I love those. Did... Make it happen, the reading that. <laughs> we want to go inside. There is uh, this actually. This question really interested me in some way. This is this is one I I I, I kind of said that there is a question that is more related to my ideas a little bit. But this, uh, mm. this, this one which says, is there any connection between the scrying pool in Eye of the North, the art, uh, how do you say it, artisan, artisan waters in ore? Yeah, I and, think that's it. 
the fractal lobby infinite pool actually which which one is it the infinite pool in in the fractal lobby do you mean where you stand in and, and then teleport or or, or actually which one Can't so? remember. and and it just says that are these are they all scrying pools or just different types i mean they mm. could, could be kind of <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, that kind of like goes into this whole thing you were talking about, right? With like places where you're close to the mist. Yeah. Magical places. Uh, I feel like water is just somehow kind of useful. <laughs> it's always a pool, you know? If you want to like go to another reality, it's always through water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? This is like the, the, uh, there is that movie with, 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 Keanu Reeves, where he can see, you know, angels and demons and stuff. Uh, and then he, to go to that other world, he has to uh, stand in water and hold a cat and stuff, you know. Wow. <laughs> and he's like, he needs the water and cat. <laughs> it's kind of just reminded, reminded me Poor of that. Cats. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, as for if they are related... I actually don't think so, honestly. Yeah, I, uh, hmm. I, I guess it's maybe like if you do it in lore, it could be like the same concepts, you know? Like, oh yeah, yeah, this is a magical place and there's water. And yeah, that's it. There's, I'm not sure if there's like some big lore reason behind it, you know? The only to reason... me, it seems more like they just kind of went like, we need some cool thing for flashbacks. Oh Let's yeah. Have a pool. I I actually do still think that I I I of the North was kind of well not the actual I of the North in Guild Wars One, but probably before they they just decided to go with I of the North as like the the last expansion because we did learn later that they actually wanted to go with Utopia and not with I of the North later on. But they kind of also needed like a sec, uh, like a prequel to to Utopia. I think I of the North has a lot of these assets left on, which is like the the actual I of the North place, the Hall of Hall of Monuments, which I I kind of still do believe that it's more mis mis related, which is obviously discontinued because they just scrapped Utopia and the whole idea. By now, so to me, the scrying pool is more like a mist like tool, you know, again, which they can explain things with or like show things, or may or who knows, maybe the, the maybe the, the scrying pool was designed to be like a I don't know, portal to to uh to the mist, even. In like Guild Wars one times, of course, not like the Guild Wars two times. I so mean, you're kind of like suggesting like maybe Utopia would have had the Eye of North as well, eh, or maybe and then just go, like, something very similar. Or something? Yeah, hmm. I I think the Eye of North is like such an interesting place in general because it's, it's like this giant building, right? Yeah. Um, and they're always kind of like teasing, like who built the Eye of the North? Where did yeah. that place come from? Um, but they never really told us. <laughs> they never really confirmed anything. Yeah, it's always sadly. just been this mystery. Um, you know what I'm sad about though? I wish we could have seen the Eye of the North from the outside in Guild Wars 2. We just never go outside. Uh, did you never break outside either? No. I'm, uh. I, uh, I did not bother. Does it look good if you do that? It's actually just... Nothing really, honestly. It's, it's just, just walls. It's just like seeing it in in like Guild Wars One, honestly. So it's basically mm -hmm. the exact same thing. It looks so pretty in Guild Wars One. I wish they would have brought it yeah, back. Yeah, it does actually. Actually, just I, know. I I think it kind of maybe it kind of like fits into that, right? Like I guess who made the Eye of the North probably also made the Scrying Pool, you know? Yeah. Maybe it was the Sears. I mean, it's also yeah. really interesting that when. I think before you are level 20 or something, you have this Call of the North or, or something in Guild Wars 1 to actually go there or something. I actually can't remember really, but I know that, that you, you get this buff called uh, Call of the North or something, 
which is really weird as well because it's basically the eye of the north calling you for some reason. Mm. So that's a little bit Magic. strange. But I also just slightly mentioning to me that it is still really strange that in Guild Wars 1, Eye of the North kind of really touched a lot on on mist-related lore, weirdly, because before we, we actually didn't really have the head those. We were m- more busy saving the world, you know, on, on those type of things. In like mm-hmm. uh, factions and nightfall, you know, but and and then suddenly I have the north is like, oh yeah, we just go do this and that, and then there are just suddenly side quests, which is like, well, there is like uh, misrelated studies and stuff, and okay, that's kind of weird. Why? So I I I do still feel like I have the north, maybe not in in its current uh, finished way. But was probably supposed to be like a prequel to actual Utopia, and that's why they kind of probably try to explain more about the myths. I I I actually do see that mostly in it. I feel like, I mean, there's lots of like, for for everyone that's listening who doesn't know, Utopia was like the cancelled fourth campaign. There's a lot of stuff from Utopia that like got used in Eye of the North as well. Though. Yeah. Like the Asura architecture and stuff was like that's that's like straight from like their utopia concepts. Yep. Um I, hmm. I, if I would have to guess, I think Utopia was like transformed into Eye of the North instead of them being like related. But I'm guessing that, you know, because Utopia was so focused on the mist, they recycled some ideas, you know? <laughs> they were like, Oh yeah, we had this cool idea for a quest about the mist. Let's put it in Eye of the North now. Yeah. I mean, I'll... regardless, though, it's it's hella interesting. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this there is like technical things behind it, obviously, because of course they won't think like you know twenty years ahead in in like lower like what could happen. They just more like open up possibilities that you know maybe we we could go that way or B way or X way or Y way, you know, but. I don't know. There are m- many, many interesting things in in the lore. Honestly, I still love the mist, and I'm kind of obsessed with the mist. I think that's kind of obvious. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay. I mean, you kind of want them to do Utopia still, don't you? Like, like I do actually. I cycle that story and like, when bring it back. when I I seen those concept arts of Utopia. To this day, I just want to visit the place. Like, I just... Because there is... Uh, I mean, obviously, there is so much thing they can put into the mist because it's the mist. It's it's like a... This interesting mush, machine. They can just do whatever the hell they, they want with because they can just explain, oh, it's just the mist. It just works that way. And yeah. that's it, you know. Which is both bad and good, but it... Mm. It's like, yo, we want to make, like... Hundreds of people fight hundreds of people in worlds versus worlds. How do we explain it? Oh, it's, it's yeah. in a mess. It's in a mess. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the same thing. But it right. I mean, that's that's kind of goes into the whole thing we were talking about earlier, right? Like yeah. the whole thing about what could they do after End of Dragons, like new continents, maybe bring back some of those old ideas. Yeah, like I with Zoteca and stuff. I I'm actually really curious where they will go. Like, because obviously we from Guild Wars 1 and who played Guild Wars 1, I mean, not like exclusively who only who played Guild Wars 1, but many people know that, you know, we started the same way. We we basically started Guild Wars 2 the same way we, we kind of started or did uh, Guild Wars 1. I mean, in, in sense of um, locations. Like, we, we already had the... the uh, um, the Crystal Desert with, with Elona, we had Tyria, like basically every single part of it by now, and, and even more expanded because we went to different places that we actually didn't see in Guild Wars 1 as well. And then now we, we get finally Kenta. And then, like, we, like, both sadly, and but fortunately, we have nothing left anymore that they could bring back from the old times. Right. There is just only new from now. After uh, End of Dragons. 
At least I hope. Yeah, like, is there, I don't think there's any single area. I mean, like, of course, there's, I guess, like, you know, tiny explorable maps or something like, yeah. oh, the southern side of uh, Korna or something, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I think every single major region has got at least one map at this point. You know, like the Northern yep. Cherry Peaks, the Verdant Cascades, er everything. Just just everything. Yeah. Nothing left they can they can do, I suppose. We, we e even went through the entire uh, Shiver Peaks, like from from bottom to top by now. Yeah. The the, the Chara homelands, everything. Ascalon, obviously, because that, that was base. But like, we had everything. The Maguma jungle, the... everything. Like, there is nothing left at all, except what you mentioned, like these very minor and absolutely nobody cares about maps or, yeah. or like uh, undiscovered zones. But honestly, I, 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 I do really think nobody cares about those anymore. Yeah. Or, or want to see. Are... People want to see. I mean, there's, there's some cool places on, on the map they could do. You know, like places that they... Uh... Places that they sort of like showed us, but we've never been to in like one or two. You know, like the Isle of Janfair, for example, we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. And, like yeah. the top left. There's like, I guess, like the, the scavengers causeway, you know, like between Ore and the Crystal Desert and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's, there's the Zelana and all that stuff, but I just want something new. I want like a whole new continent. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm gonna just open up uh, that shaman's historical map and just check, like what 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 goes on that. Like, is is there anything that that was that that could be somewhat interesting, maybe? But I I hope we do. I I don't know. And something new, something huge. Let's find something. I mean, we we even got by default. Uh, or in in Guild Wars two, w which we didn't had in in Guild Wars one. Yeah, like the... that was honestly so cool because yeah. or was always like in Guild Wars one when you were talking about or people would go like, "What the heck are you talking about?" Yeah, <laughs> it was like this thing you knew about if you read the manual, if you cared about the lore. Yeah, I was on the map, but you couldn't go there, and I was always so sad about that. And then two came out, <clears> and we got to go to or like, what? So cool. I actually, I, I'm actually still confused about Or because wasn't Or sunk at the time when we were nearby on the, on the, uh, when we were basically doing the end part of the wall campaign, and they just basically, you know, turned out that you know he's the leech and stuff, you know, they, uh, I I forget his name, I was I I was forget They're his name. Wrong. Yeah, the, we oh yeah, we wizier. That he he just sunk the, <laughs> and it's just so funny because it's just like oh I just sunk or and like, okay, <laughs> like we weren't there like, <laughs> like I think people like, didn't this, even know the, when when Orsonk was like between pre searing and post searing kind of. Oh yeah, and that's when like the char showed up and then he read like the forbidden scroll and like. Uh, and then or became a, a swimming pool, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's kind of odd, because, like, technically, you know, like, in pre-searing Ascal, um, for those of you who haven't played Guild Swan, and Guild Swan starts off as a serial <laughs> in this, like, area called pre-searing. Um, and at that time, we're still, like, alive. Like, there's people living there. It's like an alive place. Yeah. It's a... But then there's a time skip and it's like, nah, it's dead. <laughs> it's gone. I actually don't it's... even understand that. I actually genuinely don't understand that, that time skip because there is suddenly a three-year three time skip. Like, where the hell were you for three years? Like, were you in the academy where everything was... What? what? I don't understand I that. I guess you were fighting Char and just like, you know... No, because you arrive and, and then you are like, what happened here? Like, what? Really? Yeah, you just arrive and you are like, yeah, I'm going to help this place. Like, what happened? And then you just explore that. Oh, yeah, the char is on the other side. I'm like, what? Yo, maybe there's like some... So this is the biggest Guild Wars mystery. Like, maybe you went <laughs> to Zoteca in those three years. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Um, I didn't know that. I thought that the idea was just that, like, you were kind of an, in Ascalon and 
killing Char, and then you know after three years, then the game picks up again. But uh, that's why I I kind of don't like. Do we just kind of when we enter the academy? Does it skip in the way that you are like done down with the academy basically, and then leave Ascalon, and then like three but three years like how do you? Like, how do you come back three years later, like, not, not even hearing about things in, like, the Shiver Peaks or anything, if, if, if you go away, like, three years? How do like people... I always interpreted it, but this could very well be wrong, because I didn't read dialogue when I was 12. <laughs> the way I interpreted it was just like, oh, we just did this thing. Oh, Askton got destroyed. Oh, we're all sad. And then... Three years later, the story picks up again. I, I didn't interpret it as like your character left Ascalon or something. That's I'm gonna actually make like a preceding character and actually go through the story because I'm I'm absolutely confused now actually. Like how, how the world uh, post-searing starts when you finally pop in and then what people say to you. Hmm. I actually have to try this today. I haven't today. seen you in a long time, Noxy Green Rose. Yeah. It's been three years. Have you even seen my happened? mercenaries and my war team? <laughs> you just ate How Noxy. Come you haven't leveled up one level in all those three years. You're still level nine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we were just the very best students who just slept over, you know, the war searing for three years. Wow. <laughs> It's like me this morning. <laughs> um, Ace just wrote in the chat. The real question I want to answer is, is if Ord just kind of slowly sank, or if it exploded and got yeeted into the depths. That's <laughs> like, it's kind of a brutal thing, isn't it? Like this whole kingdom, and then it got sunk, and everyone drowned. Like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> yeah, like... I like to think it was fast, and it wasn't like t over like a, a week, you know. And like, how did they even, I, actually, obviously, fantasy game, you know, like, they won't care what you ask, like, like, physically, how does that happen, actually? So, obviously, there's like, but how did they, how did it sink and then not raise the, the, the water level suddenly, or like, making a giant tsunami? Because that's like, not, not really a small island, or kind of an island, kind of mm. thing. But like nobody feeling it suddenly, like there is like what, like a single camera shake maybe, and like oh, what was that? <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean it's kind of all like when or sunk, nothing happens. But yeah. then when it came back, then everything got flooded. Yeah, like suddenly. Right? There was this huge tidal wave and stuff. I mean, again, you're right though. It's just like a fancy. Also, why was like... thing? I actually don't understand the the mechanic behind it. Kind of, why were things? Fl I can get it that it makes like a giant wave when you suddenly pull up this this uh, island kind of thing uh, from under the ocean, but why does it float things when you pull something out of the water? Am I being really stupid here, actually? <laughs> because no, I mean, shouldn't like, it it float yeah, things? I don't think they care. When I don't you... think they thought about it too much. They just kind of went like, <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, we need to. Yeah, you, know, you know, like they it was like, hey, Guilt of Sue, stuff looks different. We needed a reason to explain why it looks different. And I was like, oh yeah, or oh yeah, tidal wave. You know, I I, I don't think you would usually approach this from the perspective like from a physical perspective, yeah, I suppose. More like what's well, a cool story, you know? And like <laughs> this time it made sense to do a tidal wave, and the other time it didn't make sense to do a tidal wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean the 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 name of the place or is still funny because it means nose for my language so in Hungary it means nose wow. so it's, it's really weird to say my all the time that roast oh yeah. dragons, come on <laughs> oh my gosh my nose rose <laughs> all right should we should we look at some of the other stuff yep other questions do you want to pick one again uh sure I'm gonna zoom in because I can't read. Uh, oh, it's about a Tengu. Oh. From what I know, Tengu were once considered to be a play, f like as a playable race, but it didn't pan out. What other races would you think would fit the player character role from what we know about them? Uh, and another related question, what aspect of each race would you like to see explored? That's a good question. Mm. 
I, I've seen a lot of people in uh, in 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 my my Twitch chats go like, "Yo, I want to play Kawagan." Oh my god! Spirits. I'll play Dredge. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow, you know, I have like almost like trouble seeing like this Kawagan commander like defeating Zaitan. You know, not not to like criticize the Kawagan and say that they can't kill a dragon. You know, it's just. Um, I think that Tengu makes the most sense. Yeah. By far. You know, it's the, they're, they're like, it's too perfect. And I cannot think of a single different playable race that would fit as well. Like, yeah. Kokon and stuff, that would be very fun, but I'm not sure if it would make. They have no sense history. They like just came from nowhere and they are just, oh, we are afraid. They're cute. they're cute, though. I actually hate them. I absolutely hate them. Really? I don't find them cute. I just find what? them annoying. They are not cute. Like they are. Twist. Noxie, Noxie thinks the quaggans aren't cute. Well, well. They, are, they are ugly. They are absolutely what? ugly. <laughs> I can't stand them. What is happening? <laughs> I'm sorry. How dare you? Have you seen them no. enraged? <laughs> That's not what? cute. Enraged. Oh, they're enraged. They're enraged yeah. quaggans, yes. They're, they're, they are definitely not cute. That is actually, by the way, one thing that I, I do find somewhat interesting in the, in the Quagan, that they are like supposed to be this, this cute something blob of whatever, and then if you if you anger them, they like turn, turn it into this yeah. weird monstrous <laughs> thing, which is kind of interesting, cool concept in a way, because they just go Hulk for some reason, but it's like, that's kind of random. Yo, <laughs> I want to play free squids in a trench coat. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, as for like actual like options, though, I think that Largos would be really cool. Like playing a Largos, I I could see that working out somehow. Um, I don't think it's ever gonna happen though. But yeah, like if if, if I could just magically make a race playable, I would one hundred percent go Tengu, and then maybe Largos. Do you have, yeah, do you have any, if you could just make any race playable, which one would you pick? Honestly, for me, it's it's absolutely Tengu. Not not just because mm -hmm. you know Guild Wars One and other stuff like oh Tengu Tengu Tengu, but I both really like their that they have some kind of history as well. That they are a little bit more human, but not like they have mm -hmm. really like they have still very different behavior what what they do and like obviously they have different groups and and all, all that thing so they behave differently because e even in in guild wars one we had friendly ones that were like oh hello hello and then the ones that just wanted to freaking murder you on yeah. on, on site and so yeah but their wall design as well i like it more it's more fleshed out especially in in, in guild wars 2 now uh, because they are updated, obviously, for the the Ender Dragons, but they look so good. But like, I I I I kind of understand that that people wanted like Skrit and Kodan and 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 oh, yeah. and 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 stuff like play a brace, but they are empty. They have nothing. They just been put in there. Like, sure, there was like, I mean, Kodan. I mean, honestly, Kodan is just so stupid because they are like the original Norn. By lore, technically, mm. because the Norn derived uh, came from basically the Kodan, and they just turned human. But the the Kodan is like their by lore, their very first or original form. That's why they know each other, and that's why they are also in the Shiver Pigs. Yo, I remember when the first like trailer for Guild Wars Two came out, and they showed like. Kodan really briefly and we all just thought they were Norn we we're like oh that's a Norn that turned into a polar bear yeah <laughs> it turns out they were like something completely different oh but yeah I, I mean they could add more stuff though right yeah. like they could add more backstory and, and stuff to a race oh yeah by the way as, as uh, Trix says the dwarves that's actually something that I can agree with as well because they kind of share the similar I mean, they were like, like the the Azura and and 
and the dwarves did know each other. Although I, I I don't really know how could you play it as like a playable race because of their history of you know <laughs> all all the thing that happened to them, like turning into stone yeah. and so on and so on. Like it's I don't know. It's a little bit hard to pull out now because they just made it so they they kind of can be. Yeah, I mean, like back in the back in the Guild Wars One days, like before I of the North, before they introduced like the Norn and the Asura and everything. Um, like if I was like if I would like imagine like what races would be playable, I was definitely go to oh yeah the dwarves of course of course you can play a dwarf. Um, but it feels like. Um, of course, I'm not sure if this is how it went, but it feels like Arena just kind of went like, "Yo, dwarves, it's not very original." Yeah, <laughs> let's get rid of them and we'll make Asura <laughs> instead. You yeah, know? yeah, probably. I actually which, don't mind. Which I like. I think these are more original than dwarves. Please. I'm very happy that they created the Azur actually. Like I, I don't know. It's like one of the best alien races that I actually seen. I mean, obviously they are very similar, you know, people can say that, oh, they are just, you know, the goblins or like uh, gnomes or whatever, or like a lot of and other stuff, but they are still very different and like quite unique in, in a way. Yeah. Unlike, like, you know, like human 2.0. I think that's one thing that um, other MMOs actually don't do very well. Um, not to like just criticize all other MMOs, but I think Guild Wars 2 has got such unique races. Like maybe I guess you could argue that the humans and the Norn aren't that unique. You know, you've got like the Nords in like Elder Scrolls. <laughs> but yeah. you know, like the Silvari and the Char and the Asura, they're, they're all so unique. Yeah, yeah, they are actually. And and, and I'm actually... Really... I, I do really like Char. Char was Char my... Char were my first two characters that I made in the game, and they are still there. I don't play them at all, but it's my my very first character I made in Guild Wars 2, and this still remains. But I mean, I remember when they announced it, like, you can play a Char in Guild Wars 2, and everyone was oh, like, yeah. oh, you can play a Char, I'm definitely gonna play a Char, and it's kind of cool. You know the irony? Just, like, a little bit off-topic thing, but irony for me is that when I seen the playable races first ever in my life for Guild Wars 2 I was all on Char and then yeah. I was like I will never play Azura like what the hell is that thing like no like I I, I like them in, in, in Guild Wars 1 don't don't, uh, don't interpret it differently it's just like I'm never gonna play that thing. Like, nah, it's it's like the char is like number one. And then I look where I am. I I have, I have the same as like twenty times. <laughs> wow. I love it. But they have so good animations. Anyway. Yeah, they're like they're when they move around and they jump and stuff. Oh, it's really good. Oh, oh well. Anyway. And then like uh, then you look at some other MMOs, and some people are like, well, you know, and especially now with this whole Tengu thing where people are some people are kind of sad that they won't be playable in end of dragons they're like well in final fantasy they're adding races all the time and then i'm like yeah but they're just all like humans you know <laughs> like there's yeah. bigger humans there's smaller humans and there's humans with bunny ears and there's humans okay. with cat ears i'm gonna tell you one thing about final fantasy thing obviously um yes some people know that i i mod the game, which is obviously not allowed in that way, but um, just talking about the mods, I just don't understand some people because I really love the the Auri, which is the Aura, uh, that race in in Final Fantasy. They are the the dragon kind of looking ones, you know, and mm -hmm. the dragon humans. Yeah, basically, but. In in concept, the the male is like you know like tall, buff, and stuff, and I'm a, a little bit angry on on the game that they decided that the, that the female should look like a supermodel instead of like because they actually they were supposed to be also kind of buff by lore and like big muscle mu muscly you know n not just this this very very thin supermodel small girl with just some scales on but anyway um there are many people 
to mod this race so that it can look a, uh, look like a, a human character. So they make an aura and mod the game to remove all the scales, the tail and everything to make it look like a human. And I'm like, B, just play a freaking human then. Don't make an aura and mod it into a human. Just create a human. It's so strange to me that like people mod an MMO. Um, of course, I think it's against TOS and stuff, but yeah, it um, is. Like, it, other people don't see that stuff, right? I don't know, I don't nah. see the same stuff other people see. No, nah, just uh, all, all client side. That's why yeah. they can't really do anything about it, unless you like, you know, go out, go around the game and just keep speaking in in all chat. You know, like like, oh, I have mods installed. Ban me. I have been mods installed. Ban, you know. Like, do that. you know that's but it's but it's like the same thing if you do like you know like uh, gold selling stuff you know if you are just not not like some dumb best to say that oh i just bought gold please like whatever but yeah don't they like track that stuff down though <clears throat> no they they I, I think they, they really do. can't really i mean they can the gold in some way but not n not the mods because it's just full full client side right I mean, I remember when, uh, when like in Guild Wars Two, they had like this thing, and they banned everyone that had like cheat engine running. And oh stuff. yeah. I know. I I would be way too spooked to do something like that. <laughs> like I'm already like slightly spooked when I like use reshade in Guild Wars. <laughs> yeah. I know it's probably fine. Yeah, still, because they I... are very very like strange on these things. You know, very strict. Which is yeah. strange because they were less. I mean, yeah, it, it was in Guild Wars One. It was way different because even Guild Wars One had weird mods that they kind of approved, but not. You know, they were mm. like, if it's for cheating or something, we will absolutely take steps, but just keep it friendly. Like, just don't do things that you don't want to. Mm. Because you had, you know, the 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 texture mods for which I actually started to use for. Because I'm working on the Guam title, so I can explore better for the exploration title. Because that's pain in the butt. But, yeah. Oh yeah, that's something people use like a thing for, so they can see what they've explored and what they haven't. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard of that. Uh, anyway, cool people that are listening to this podcast, read the TOS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, there's no responsibility here. <laughs> Don't break the rules. Meanwhile, yeah, I, I, I think that's what I like so much about like the Guild Wars 2 races. Like they, they feel genuine to me. Yeah. Like, for example, the, the female Char. I don't even really play Char, but it's just cool to me that they feel legit like female Char. It's not like they just went like, oh, um, it's a Char, but now we're turning it into a supermodel, you know? Yeah, slap some boobs on it, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, just... look, put it in, into some bikini and all the thing. It's like, yo, oh my God. I'm so happy they don't they don't do that. I I think Guild Wars 2's races are like so unique and like all the animations and I guess that's why um it would be a lot of work to add a new one, you know, because their yeah. their, their quality bar is also so high, like different voice acting and like oh my gosh, it would be so much work. <laughs> okay, so just read that. <laughs> Give them six breasts. <laughs> Oh lord. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. No. Don't take my female char away from me. I don't even have a female char. But... You don't? Oh, well. <laughs> I found on my alt account. Oh. I'm not on my main. Oh. I, I used to only have Sylvari and humans and a sir. And I made a Norn like two months ago. <laughs> oh my god. I have one Norn, I think. Because I just made it for some whatever r random reason kind of cool though like they've got all new animations i'm like wow there's a new playable race after like nine years of made a norn for the first time i actually have one flower haired human female character which i made because i made a bet <laughs> yo that the flower hair meta is kind of cool isn't it <laughs> it used to be this meme almost that like everyone used this one hairstyle I don't see anyone use it anymore. It's like Guild Wars 2 fashion has just decided that that hair is no longer cool. Mm. 
I don't know, I actually still say it a lot of times, but it's it's kind of more diverse now than it was. It used to be like everywhere. Yeah, this is a fashion podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yo, should we talk about like like Trix's here? Mm. We should definitely talk about Trix's question, I feel. The, <laughs> how does a waste disposal work in theory? <laughs> The only dump is what? The only dump is a small junkyard in the plains of Ashford. <laughs> Where does all the waste go? Uh, where it goes to? We open hundreds of boxes daily. Do we just throw the empty ones on the floor? Is there recycling? Do the script collect it all? How? <laughs> I love this question. Um, well, there's actually an old lines arch that used to be a water closet, right? Yes. You know, you know, there was this NPC yes. that was like, we have the water closets. <laughs> yeah, we have sewers and water system or what. I actually forgot the, the code, but I heard it so many times in, in old Lion's Arch. I miss old Lion's Arch. Oh yeah, because um, he keeps explaining, like, some he, he kind of just mentions that you don't want to know where it goes. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I, I think I know the answer to this question. I felt her very hard about this tricks. You know this place got Southern Cove. Um uh. I think Southern Cove is just our junk. It's like our junk just like we got dumped into the ocean and then we got Southern Cove. We got the Corka. That's that's how it all works. <laughs> I mean it's, it's... How do you think this island came out of nowhere? It wasn't there in Guild Swan. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. No, I I've, I've got no idea. Hmm. Maybe they, they, uh, I mean, they could actually use some, like, you know, like a volcano or just melt everything down and burn, but uh, I don't know about the air there. Then... Magic. There's just like an alternate reality, like you said, you know, in the, in the mist. It's I mean, like a waste reality where everyone dumps their waste. Wait, no, we, we are stupid. Like, why would they need, like, like, like you know, like a uh, su sewer system, when you can clearly see that no NPC and no player character ever goes to you know, like toilet ever. So obviously, oh, you're saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, and we never eat really things. Like we we just eat like 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 holographic things. I mean, I eat a lot of butternut squash <laughs> somehow. Yeah, but where does it go? It just turns yeah. into a buff immediately. It just enters your mouth and then it just disappears. <laughs> it just turns into energy. Pure energy. Uh, Blade are just wrote, don't the char throw their waste into their active volcano thing in the Black Citadel? I think, I mean, the char, they like industrial. They're, they're like the only ones that have thought about this. Um, the humans, they probably just throw everything in like the giant hole that they've got. That seems like a good spot to like store your waste. Uh, the Silvari, they definitely recycle. They, 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 they're like plants, you know. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> and the Sir, they just zap it, zap their, zap their waist. I think we've answered the question, Oxy. I think we figured it out. <laughs> Pavilion, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah, they clean it up once here. I, I suppose. Oh yeah, before it even starts, you know, just. Guys, hurry up! <laughs> the event is starting soon in like two weeks. Go. Fine, it's fine. Uh, what I else do we have? <laughs> I mean, I I do actually wonder sometimes about this because no game ever explains these. Like it's just so normal that that like it's like in games. Obviously, they just won't think about these and it's like you know magic, whatever. But like I never, I actually genuinely never seen a game where, or like an MMO of course, where it's like, oh yeah, there is actually like some kind of system for it, and you know like blah blah blah, and just explains, and it actually works like, I don't know, because games just put down random toilets as well, but but then you see nothing about them, like it's just yeah sure that's nice there, but how does it work? <laughs> I mean, like, imagine, okay, imagine you're making yourself an MMO, and you're like, yo, what am I going to mix today? I could make an epic dragon battle, you know, fight the Shatter. Yes. Where you could go like, let's make a dump. 
a sewer you know, system. I know which design. one I would add to my game. <laughs> I actually like to think about these minor details sometimes. Even w when I'm writing and working on my own little uh, story stuff, I'm like, I'm, I sometimes just wander off and be like, huh, could they have like some kind of weird system for this to work better? And then they just go off and off and off and on and on it. <laughs> I don't know. That's like some in-depth world building. I like this because it's it's nice little flavors and, and details, but sometimes it's just too much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does have, like, like tricks. I, I do think it's legitimately kind of interesting when you're, like, doing vault building and you're, like, thinking about, like, trivial things and stuff. Kind of neat. It's kind of neat. Oh, no, we we are turning into the... the <laughs> okay, I... Uh, no, never mind, I won't say that. <laughs> Talking about details, <laughs> I just won't say that. I don't want to sound I don't mean. Know what the heck you're talking about. No, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing. Okay. Nothing in in the recent uh, twenty four hours. <laughs> mm. uh, there was actually by uh, just because uh, we 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 also brought up chars. There is this question of. Oh, as I am very much char focused, uh, I want to ask if you guys think Ragar Man Eater will ever come up in the Guild of Two lore, as Flesh Reavers are around even to this day. It's kind of interesting because it was in Guild Wars One. Although I actually don't know where the Flesh Eaters are coming from, though. I actually, never, never was. Isn't there like some vault lore about how they? They sort of like um, get stuff and then form their body, or is that some other thing? I feel like these these flesh reavers and stuff are like such an obscure part of of the Guilders universe. Yeah, I mean there I can't are. Say I don't know much about them. Mm, kind of same, but hmm. Wait, there are. Uh, what is his name? Uh, Ragar Manager. Ragar's Menagerie. Menagerie, whatever, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I'm not the best in, in, in saying names. Uh, oh, oh flesh okay, so there's like... There's <clears throat> this... Okay, I'm, I'm like entirely not unaware of this stuff, but apparently there was like a char in, Gil in Gilders 1 that's like... It's like in a dungeon in Ive North, and he's like breeding these flesh reavers. Um, in, in, it's kind of a cool story. I was not even aware of this. And like in Guild of Two, there's still Flesh Reavers, and he kind of bred them, I guess. Mm. Okay, I actually found this. So the Guild Wars 1 wiki says that by quote, which I don't know which... Uh, oh, it's from the Guild, uh, the Guild Wars Eye of the North manuscript, and it says, mm. as quote, that Flesh Reavers are horrible fleshy monsters with an unusual method of evolution. A young Flesh Reaver is born as barely more than a small skeleton. The parents, yeah. the parents, assure uh, the survivor of their young, young by layering muscle tissue and flesh over the, the delicate newborn. What? Uh, yeah, so they're like these wild creatures, and like they they kind of made out of like junk and stuff, kind of. Yeah, I mean, who is surprised by they call, being called flesh river, you know? <laughs> and it's this is something I didn't know, but apparently there was this char and I've nerfed that was like cr training them and like creating yeah. them. It's kind of strange. I mean that yeah, the the Rogar was also experimenting with oses, making different ones. Hmm. That's so cool. I never played that stuff in Guild Wars 1. Kinda neat though. Um, will they ever bring him back? Uh, uh, I don't think I'm so. I'm not sure if they uh, still would. Does it doesn't make sense? Like, I, w I would love to see them do something like that, but it's, at this point it's, it's kind of like old obscure lore which most people yeah. have forgotten about. I feel like they're more likely to do new things or do things that people like really remember. Um, you know, there's so much like almost like forgotten stories out there. I would love to see them bring it back though, but still. Not sure if, if it's likely. 
Oh, wait, what? So, by lore, it says that they are rapidly growing by... They, they actually need, uh, like, flesh pieces and muscle tissues and all these things from other, other beings in order to, to actually supply its, its rapidly growing form. So they can actually, like, like infinitely grow or something? As long they can oh, keep up the, the supply. The oh my god. Giant flesh river. It's kind of weird that... Wait, did we actually only see flesh rivers in Guild Wars 1 in the depths of Tyria? Okay, I actually I didn't so. know. For some reason... In Guild Wars 2 they're, they're much more common though. Yeah, I, yeah it, I probably just mixed up with, with like Guild Wars 2 probably at this point. Because it's much more common there. I was actually was awesome. like um, entirely unaware of them. I was doing a stream like maybe like half a year ago, and I was like in Lonar Spas, and then I ran into Flesh Reaver, and I was like, "What the heck is that? I don't even know what a Flesh Reaver is." Um, so it's kind of kind of odd to me. I was just unaware that those even existed. Yeah, that they do. They're there. I feel like they're pretty obscure though. Just like uncommon. Something most people don't know about or remember about. Yeah, we have weird creatures, but we but we still don't have horses. <laughs> but we have wow. Kirin, or however you say that, Kirin. I just call it Kirin. That's how you write it. Oh yeah, those they're coming back in, in and yeah. as well, right? Like we saw one in a trader. Yeah, it was on on the Equal Forest uh, mm -hmm. preview. I'm excited about that. Karen's were always like cool. Yeah. They're cute. They're like ponies. They're they like were ponies. they were also usually monks, like healers or 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 like you know uh, support builds basically because based on 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 Guild Wars one uh, skills they always had they are always monks. And that is just something I'm excited about in general, like end of dragons. Um. You know, Canva back in the day, it brought so many like new creature types. Yeah. It's not like they just took like the types from Guild Swan and put them in Canva, but they added like Kappa, they added Wallows, Kirins, like so many new creatures were added in factions. And now they're coming to Guild Wars 2 and like Naga. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited to see like all the new enemy types and see what they move like and I kind of know fight Kappa. I I kind of wonder if they will mention or or if there will be some kind of lore like they are like in the sense that obviously by now we are like much more into the future compared to Guild Wars 1 so like will they have some kind of teaching or like a history of like what were the afflicted and stuff like will they mention it or something mm. or we'll have like pictures of it because they actually will look too horrifying honestly if you guys, I, mean, I think in Fall of Fire they had like school, right? Like where they were teaching these kids about history. Oh yeah. I I would love to see something like that, like maybe in Kaineng, and then there's like an NPC that's like talking about history or something. I would love to see something like that. I actually like, love those things. Like I'm guessing that there will probably be no fixes because it's been so long. Yeah, and, obviously. You know, Ministry of Purity tries to like try to like get rid of them. But that would be cool as well, like a boss that's like an afflicted that's just been around since like back then. Uh, Not expecting it though. I actually don't expect it because obviously the, the afflicted was truly actually Shiro's creations mm -hmm. in a way. By the by that corruption, by the affliction. Uh, so since Shiro isn't around just with us, obviously, <laughs> on, on our back, if if, if we are a uh, uh, revenant. <laughs> Wow. I actually wonder just like back because of us, so we just ruin everything. I actually do wonder like will there be any kind of interaction between the Revenant just pulling out, you know, the Shiro stance and just and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, I can communicate with the person that completely ruined this place. <laughs> and they're like, hmm, cool, thumbs up, you know. Hell yeah. <laughs> like that's it interesting. Would be cool if they did some like dialogue with Shiro in like different places. Didn't they? That would be a lot of work, I guess. 
didn't they mention i'm actually not sure i'm i'm absolutely not sure anymore but didn't they mention something that uh that your shiro stance if you are in shiro stance and in kanta you may have like a new dialogue for, from him or something i actually not don't sure. know or was it just someone mentioning that they could do this i, I don't know I would love to do it, something like that, but you know, and then they also have to get the, that. I'm not sure who voiced Shiro, but they have to get the voice actor back in for like all the languages. Could be, could be kind of a pain for something small. Would be very cool though. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just excited in general to like feel the the Canfan vibes again. Uh, you know, I've been playing for Guilty Swan recently. Uh, you've you've been there a couple times, and it's just so cool. Like Hanfa is just in Guilty Swan is relatively small, but it's like my favorite continent by far. Yeah, same. It's, it's just so unique. It's, it's beautiful. Compact. Yeah, Jade Sea, Echo Vault, Xingjie, Kainang. I I want to go there so badly, and I cannot wait for this expansion to come out. And I still and like it so that oh I. I still really like it that the the Equal Forest is still kind of like you know like gloomy, but mm -hmm. still somewhat half alive by now because yeah. it's returning to life kind of, but still also kind of half dead. So it's like in between the two, and it's like such a good flavor. Honestly, it's it's it's, it's nice. Yeah, it feels a bit like Auric Basin, but a little bit more dark. You know. Like, if you mix Auric Basin and Echo Vault from Guild of Swan together... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cannot wait. Uh, did you watch the live stream yesterday? Where they announced new stuff? Yep. Oh, I'm... I'm I'm so excited that they're adding Arborstone. <laughs> I've seen, like, like, some people actually react to it a lot more negatively. But I'm just excited that it's like a city. It's like a social place you can go, like, see other people. I just want to like hang out and, and feel the Canva vibes, you know? I want to play music, not in Divinity's Reach, but in, in, in Arborstone. I'm so excited about that. I actually really like Arborstone in the sense that it was really beautiful, but I did actually say negative things about the stream, honestly. Just in, in the sense that it could have been much shorter on that. But I, I, I did like what they explained about Arborstone. I like. I mean, I, I like the place. I'm not sure if it will be used that much. I I kind of hope because it, I don't know, to me, it, it looks better than I have the North. Because yeah. it, it's it's supposed to be I have the North-like place as well for, like, people. So it's not, not like an instance solo thing place, but like a I hub. It will be because, like, um, it's it's a part of the, you know, it's a part of the expansion. Yeah. Like with Sun's Refuge, for example, it was a bit hard because it was like very specifically tied to this one different world episode. Yeah. But and it's, it's like in the core, if that makes sense. So I, I assume, you know how in Heart of Four she goes like Rada Nova's like every single episode pretty much? Oh. <laughs> I hope it will be like that. Like where you keep going back there and they keep like expanding it and adding more stories and everything. Wow. Well, I hope it will end up like that. I mean, it's. It's actually going to be much more different now because if I understood the whole thing, it's it will be actually like a I have the North place. So there will be you you will be able to see other players unlike the the other uh, yeah. previous places, which was I think that was the bane of like sun, uh, the the Sun's Refuge or I forgot yeah. because it's like boring to it was there. like solo. Like why would I go there? Like yeah there was they they actually gave no reason other than like just uh, upgrading it through the story there was like absolute no reason to go there mm -hmm. to... for me i think it's also just about immersion kind of yeah like i understand that some people are like oh well but i'm i would just go to mistlock it's more convenient which makes sense right but for me it's just like i want to feel like i'm in canva yeah <laughs> you know for me that's enough reason to actually like go in there and actually spend some time there yeah, you're you're right. I think Sun's Refuge did not have any convenience at all. Yeah, it had nothing. It it it, it had no crafting and nothing at all. Mm -hmm. So, but it's also it's it's really, I in my opinion, 
it's it's really nice to notice that they can did did you actually notice that they started to to kind of experiment more with these places where you can actually yourself upgrade something like a place but it's yeah. only visible to you and like only upgrades for you but not not anyone else which i feel like they are actually trying something with this for the future for pr possibly not uh, uh, an end of dragons but probably it could yield something even better in in, in the maybe next expansion because it means that they can I mean, obviously, many many studio uh, will kind of experiment with these. That if it works well or not, you know, like not ev like like uh, World of Warcraft didn't have like um, what is it called? Like this, uh, like creating different map shards. You know, very just uh, phases out of uh, phases for you only. Like they they actually didn't had that in the past, but they just broke it mm. in and just tested like, okay, does this work or not? And and then people actually liked it that you you can progress in in some place and go on, but then others can't see it. Although it's it's a bit different there because you also phase out for other people. Oh, I'm glad they're not doing that. Like you can only see people at the same mastery yeah. as you. That would be kind of. I actually really, really didn't like that in in like World of Warcraft back then, because I think they they kind of broke that in 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 like Cataclysm or something or or maybe before. I can't really remember when, but I I. It was just so weird because when I tried to play with friends all, all the time when I still had people to play with. Oh yeah, I th oh yeah, they 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 probably did bring it in 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 Wrath of the Lich King, but when we tried, it was just so weird that people are like phasing in and out. You know, you are like, oh, I I'm 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 trying to solo this this uh this quest, and then I'm just waiting for someone to come, and then you just coming coming. Oh like oh yes yes I I I will have have someone to help me, and then they just say phase out and just disappear and like what well, great. Oh, you can't see each yeah. other because you're on a different stage of the quest. Yeah, because they just phase into a different uh, part of right. the zone, which is on, on like a different step. Which is, yeah, it's. I mean, it makes somewhat sense, obviously, but it's just so bad in that way that it just mm. tears uh, tears everyone apart. In in, this in seems some much sense. Better. That's so like in the yeah. Version. So in this case, in Guild Wars 2, what they are doing right now, I actually like this. So. Obviously, not many people will look into this, but I actually really like it that they are bringing in something like this, and seeing that they kind of starting in like a smaller scale, so they are not not trying like right away like oh yeah, uh, Shinji will will work like this, and then Echo will will work like this. No, in mm. instead they are like yeah, Arbor Stone will work like this, so they can obviously test it more in that instead of like you know. Uh, Ex I... accidentally screwing all over the other maps and everything else. Yeah, that would be so wild if like an explorable map like changes depending on the story or something. Yeah. That would be super cool. Which honestly would be the best because that uh well it probably won't bring it back but remember the 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 original thing that they wanted that the world feels like it's changing. But the oh, the yeah. struggle was for them that it changed permanently for everyone. Yeah, Living World Season 1. However, with this technology... <laughs> yeah. But with this kind of technology, if and if they keep going on, they could actually make maps, actual maps, where you maybe even, depending on the meta, something changes and... Others can't so like cool. abuse it or whatever that they are just mm -hmm. you know just uh, oh I just logged on and 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 then you are there but without doing anything you know so there's many possibilities that they can use this this tech for more and and I'm actually very very glad that they keep experimenting more and more with these new things like the I think the the turtle is also more of an experiment right now for further. Uh, not just mounts, but just similar systems where they where they could slap people together on something moving, 
because they already have like because so far they only have like moving platforms at best that can move and and it brings players with them as well. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, that's actually not that easy to code. No, for years they didn't really have stuff like that either. It's Be like relatively new still. Yeah, because I I I, I sometimes keep seeing like uh, these these kind of you know developer style uh, videos on YouTube sometimes that, 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 that like tries to teach these in like you know Unreal Engine or whatever like how can you do this that the, that when your 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 uh, character or something that you drop stays on that moving platform and it's yeah. like very complicated it's, it's it's not like it just oh it just physics and it stays there mm -hmm. it's pretty so, tricky yeah so yeah they the the thing i just wanted to say that I, i'm actually very glad that they keep experimenting these with these things but n not many people think you know too in depth into these like what's in the background because Obviously, it's it's probably not that obvious for many people, but to me, I actually like to think about this. Like, this is new tech, obviously. How did they make this? So How did they, they get this stuff together? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I feel like they're actually kind of pushing the envelope every time. Yeah. You know, like trying new things, adding new technology and stuff. Um, so I'm excited to see if there's going to be more exciting new technology in End of Dragons. Yeah, uh, honestly, they they actually kind of did that with 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 Guild Wars One as well. If you think back, like Guild Wars One, the the prophecies part was really hard in for like even new players or like veterans. Like it had such such a weird difficulty scaling, and like the rewards, you know, getting money. What can you farm? Yada yada yada. That that you went to. And then they were like got feedback that it's it's a little bit too much, you know. And then mm -hmm. they created factions half a year later. Obviously, that's not really a long time to learn that much. But they were like, okay, we're gonna tone it down a little bit or change things, and so on. And then you got factions where you basically spike up the the leveling very early on, like. We are doing. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know, we, uh, you did a, a factions playthrough as well, uh, with with every, every other campaign, and many people know that you can really le uh, level really fast in in factions suddenly. Yeah. But the it's like, if you want to like rush your character to twenty, you need to make a factions character. Yeah, but the difficulty also sp spikes really really soon in the game yeah. right away. Like it, it doesn't. And then they came with Nightfall uh, uh, after that, and then they got feedback again that it's a little bit too much, but in a different way too much. Like you just level way too fast, and then the difficulty spikes right away from from like the the mm -hmm. you know sh Shinji as you go, and then you hop onto uh, Kaineng, and then it's just suddenly like oh, oh okay, I actually can't really do this so easily. And yeah, I think Nightfall did it perfectly. Yeah. Um, the thing about factions is definitely like because you level up so fast in like the first area. It's also like if you like just skip a couple of side quests, you just get like thrown into this like max level area while you're still like level 14. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's painful. And I, I've actually seen a lot of people go like um, when they're just playing factions by themselves where they're like, I can't play this game. Like, it's too hard. I, I can't get past this. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, the only way to do it is to level up first. <laughs> Go back and do those side quests. I think Nightfall really, like, struck the right balance between, like, fast leveling and also, you know, not having this difficulty spec you're talking yeah. about. However... It's cool to see them learn, you know, and yeah. them, like, apply these lessons. I think, actually, I of the North was, uh, ironically, the best. They eventually came up with because they also dropped this this force hero use that oh you actually need this hero and you need x oh, x yeah. hero and then you are like you you have like four f uh four people party with, with like friends and then and then you're like okay so who who, who, who wants to leave you know because yeah, f you like that was so bad like why oh, why God, am i forced and then they yeah, finally and drop you, that. You would just have like a party of like eight people, and then it's like, oh shit, we need to have Dunkoro. <laughs> and then you're just kind of screwed over because you need to kick someone. Oh, hate that stuff. 
So I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah. So I'm going to just say it, that I think for our internet, the best ex- expansion will be probably the fourth one. <laughs> Again. <laughs> honestly. Maybe. I think I've North has a son of pot- I- I've never- I think End of Dragons has a son of potential. Because yeah. it feels like they're kind of looking back at Spotfire and Heart of Fire Heart of Horns. Heart of Fire, wow. Um, <laughs> and it's kinda of like trying to com almost like combine them. I mean clearly we haven't seen the meta shots, right? Yeah. But they sound like they want the metas to be like replayable and the maps to be replayable. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds like um, you know, their 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 maps are still gonna be really big and like pretty, like in Bullfire. And I'm just so excited about the fact that we're getting strikes on launch day. You know, we've never had an expansion which had like instance content yeah. on day one. And they're gonna be strikes on launch day. Oh, I think this has the potential to be the best Skills 2 expansion. Yeah. But of course we'll have to see. The only thing I'm really excited. Honestly, genuinely the only thing that still worries me is just the only fact that they were kind of forced to do this expansion, you know, and not and it didn't really came just naturally. There, there are still great things. Don't 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 misunderstand what I'm trying to to say. I mean, not you, but like everyone. Uh, but to me, it sometimes comes off really weird when you are. There is a huge difference when but when you get told to do something versus when you are just like, yeah, I'm gonna do this thing, you know. I mean, we don't really know for sure. That's yeah, the wonder, yeah, right? obviously. I, it's very possible that Arena just went like, yeah, we would love to make an expansion. And then it got like greenlit and stuff. We don't really know like who came up with it first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, it was like the publisher going like, y'all should really make an expansion. Or it was like Arena like, yo, can we please make an expansion? Or maybe like, it, it could have been like a middle ground where they were like, you know, like we do plan expansion but first we kind of want to end this you know ice bridge saga because obviously it's it's so obvious that they had to rush as ice bridge saga like kind of completely throw it out uh throw it out because of end of dragons and they have right. to work on that so i i feel like that they actually do wanted an expansion but they wanted to do it like slowly after Icebreak Saga ends because they plan to do Icebreak Saga much more better in in way better quality than it ended with because it started really like the start of Icebreak Saga was a like to me was really high quality but then it suddenly yeah. dropped like there's such a drastic drop in, in in quality and everything suddenly like in in quantity quality and everything that it just obvious to me that that was the point when they were like, okay, scrap everything. We just have to kind of rewrite uh, Asbury Saga because we we need an end of dragons right now. Yeah, and it does feel like, you know, with champions, they were like, how yeah. can we, you know, most of us work on the expansion, but some people still need to finish Ice Boots, and it feels a little bit like lower budgets and stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, sadly, it feels like less people were working on it, like no new maps and stuff. Yeah, the story also started really great. Honestly, just to to add, add more to it because I I kind of like this that it started off really more of this this gray darker tone, honestly than this like you know oh everything is good we solve everything you know we are happy happy family and stuff you know, and no instead it's just like well, just this gray story. Yeah, the, the part that I just dislike is just the whole thing about Promorders and how Promorders just got like kind of added out of nowhere <laughs> barely got any real story yeah like, yeah don't even mention that please no my heart <laughs> my primordials though, though, um i i know lots of people disagree with this and that's totally okay but i think an expansion is like so healthy for the game yeah like same. i'm so happy about how the game is doing right now and how how much excitement there is i would almost say that it was worth it <laughs> you know <laughs> Like, would I have liked to see Icebreak Saga get, like, more effort at the end and, like, get it, see it have, like, a proper send-off that was a little bit less rushed? Yes. But I also like the fact that there's an expansion coming in three months, you know? Yeah. I... And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You know what? Maybe this was worth it. Honestly, I actually... 
you know when they were so happy that when they announced uh Eyes with Saga that it it will be like a free expansion expansion like uh, you know content and stuff and i honestly i was genuinely like i don't want free expansion like stuff i rather pay for that give me an actual expansion and put yeah, that just... money in into that quality instead of like going like oh it will be free and and we just pray that it will make up the money you know because obviously they 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 do need a fund and money for it like it won't just pop out of the air so yeah just like an actual expansion like when you call it an expansion it just brings yeah. more hype doesn't it like i wasn't seeing a lot of people on like you know general gaming forums and subreddits going like oh yeah go to two ice boot saga i'm definitely going to try a game again yeah but with like the new expansion of, of end of dragons i'm seeing lots of people go like oh i should try the game again yeah just it brings more hype they yeah. should still up their marketing thing because it's still i don't know it's it's like the weakest spots of our internet to me i um i will say though i've again i maybe i'm just being overly positive but i'm overly optimistic <laughs> But I like the 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 marketing cycle for End of Dragon so far way more than Puff of Fire. Yes, of course, like, that's that... Puff of Fire just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Now we're getting all these streams. We're getting lots of trailers and um, Asian just built something up in the chat. Like the traders tell nothing about the expansion. I I think that's like we got some of these CGI trailers, you know, like the one with June and and looks really pretty. But I think it would be really good to have like a big feature trader. Yeah. You know? I, People go like, oh yeah, I, I want to play. I, I want to play this. I kind of feel like that the problem is that they are trying to be more artistic than, than actually trying to tell something. Because so far every of these these trailers they do, it's more like, you know, like, oh, how beautiful this is. and I, But it tells nothing. And that's Maybe my <laughs> that's my problem. That like, is... If you care about the lore, then it's great. Yeah, I think we also need a trader, which like, you know, which like regular gamers that don't play Guilders too will go like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. And you then know? just we're still kind of missing that trader. Yeah, I... did they actually? Uh, um, I actually can't see or uh, find the 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 roadmap thing that they will show through before release, but. Did they mention that they will show like or maybe tease something out of the the strikes that they plan to to give in Land of Dragons? I don't think they've because honestly like, that schedules anything that which, yeah that could it's because be of better. story spoilers right like yeah. the strike encounter is supposed to be based like um to be based of like story encounters and they're like oh we're not showing them because of spoilers um I totally get that but. <laughs> I think if they want to build hype for this expansion, the camp, I think yeah. strikes is like one of the biggest features of this expansion. You know, like strikes and going to get challenge modes. Um, I I think if they do like a strike trailer or like a strike live stream, that would just make so many people excited. So yeah, I I don't think they're gonna do it, but I wish they would do it. I also just you know yeah like. To me, what annoys me a little bit, like not it's it's not it's it's not like overly frustrating or anything, but they are always keep saying you know that they don't want to spoil the story, but they also want to sell the game to like new players. But new players don't even know what's the story or what is the about. Oh, yeah. If if they exit like if they don't say directly that hey this this what we tease is is a spoiler. Then they won't know what is it. They 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 don't know if it's like an open world thing. Is it a raid or strike or it's like a story thing or re or related to anything history story the the lore or anything. They, they won't know. Like sure, uh, all like veteran players. Uh, we will know. We will know. It's a spoiler. Yeah, we we know of course. But then they also want new players, obviously, because that's where they can get profit, not just us all the time. Yeah, but. So to me, it's like, I get that they wouldn't like story stri show strike where we're fighting like a dragon or where we're fighting June or something, you know, that, yeah. would, that would be pretty big spoiler. Yeah, that would be, of but, course, but they could still I'm like... thinking like, isn't there like one strike where you just like fight a jade golem or something, you know, where it's, it's kind of like, you, you know, it's kind of doesn't spoil much. I guess maybe there's just not. 
Yeah, they I, could I would still love to see something like yeah. that. Yeah. They could still just show just tiny bits as well and then just like look at how <laughs> I don't know, like but if they just keep hiding behind this wall that oh even the place spoilers everything then just just uh. I mean I do kinda like though that like there's still so much to like discover. Of course, yeah, yeah, that's 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 really nice, but they also kinda need but at least with strikes they should hype some people. There like, was like one blog post about strikes and that made me really excited. But I want more. I wanna see them, you know? I wanna see what it's like. I will get like a strikes trailer at some point. But uh, I do kinda doubt it. <laughs> yeah. They seem so far it feels like strikes are they're just gonna like get drops into the game and they're not gonna be a big part of the marketing. Uh, I don't know why they um, I don't know. <laughs> they they kinda have this this weird thing, but well well anyway. It's not really. Um, also, we are kind of around the end of the stream slowly. I well, not 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 slowly. We are actually past the the kind of um, proposed time. So I guess we, we should slowly. Yeah, we should I'm just angry. end. Laura is also here, and Laura will stream right after this. After yeah, <sighs> I'm gonna eat dinner so, yeah. and then I'm gonna stream. So we're gonna end here, guys. Uh, God, I have I, I I always struggle with ending the stream, so I'm gonna just be, I'm gonna just be fast. I'm gonna crack my fingers and just say that yep, thank you guys for coming and being here and listening to us rambling and all the thing, <laughs> especially ab about you know lore. <laughs> I I hope we we discussed enough lore. <laughs> Uh, he talks about a lot of other stuff too. That's yeah, fine. Well, that's fine. Honestly, it, it wasn't just strictly lore. Hell yeah! So I think it's nice. It it was nice to just discuss and like share thoughts. It, 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 I love yeah. this. But thank you for having me, Noxie. This was fun. Yeah, uh, I'm very grateful that you were uh, here on my stream again, Laura, for the second Hell time, yeah. and that I'm I'm a able to talk with you like this as well. Uh, so. Yes, thank you again for coming. Uh, we shall end it here. Thank you, Lara, for coming again. You can visit Lara on her uh, contacts that you can see on the screen, uh, on hey. Twitter, uh, Twitch, probably everyone who is here or, or already know, knows you anyway, honestly. So <laughs> there is nothing I'm new. Sure <laughs> I actually highly love, like, probably more people know you than me anyway. So. <laughs> sure about that uh, i'm actually pretty sure honestly but yeah yeah so thank you all again for coming and thank you Laura, again for coming and with Yay, that and thank you all for sending in cool questions and stuff yeah same and well with that the the stream is ending see you guys mm, sometime next time year, next year see you guys yeah happy 2022 same bye everyone